Hey everybody, Asher here, and it's Free Play Friday, where today we're going to get a game that I actually have gotten a few requests for previously. It's Renowned Explorers International Society, which is a game that's been on my radar pretty much since people pointed out that, hey, it's a lot like FTL, but a little different. And it's made by Abbey Games, which if you've played Reyes before, that is a fun one. But one of the things that I had with Reyes, I did do a few videos of it, didn't really stick with me. And I have had an opportunity to play with Renowned Explorers, and while it's fun... I'm still curious about whether it's going to stand the test of time for me or not. I have played a few games. We are going to just go ahead and dive a little bit into a new game today because I want to show you all the gameplay for those of you who may be unfamiliar with it. So we're just going to hit new game here and we're going to do adventure mode. There's two options here, kind of the open world stop and start as much as you like or adventure mode, which is more of the roguelike difficulty here. And we are going to play on classic. I have one on normal and I have not one on impossible or classic for reasons that we'll talk about probably as we get into the video but you can see I've unlocked a few things here just kind of how this game works there's a lot of different systems that go into it so it's a little hard to kind of give a crash course if you so if you want to see more about this game let me know in the comments and I may do at least a little mini series or a few runs on the channel but sort of in the spirit of free play Friday I am just gonna dive into it a little bit more here now you have different attributes to think about scientists scout fighters or speakers and while there is some merit to actually trying to diversify your team, there's also another strategy that involves trying to take in as many people as possible of the same kind of type or variety. So we're going to do that a little bit today because one of the things that I like about Renowned Explorers is the fact that you can actually play and not necessarily have to fight all the time. You still do fight, but we'll talk about it a little bit. We're going to use Kwame as our leader today. He's not a default leader, but he's who we're going to go with. Anyway, I believe that's Ghana. Yep, I got it right. Uh, thank you, fo uh, football manager. Uh, Kwame has left the Azizi tribe to spread the spirit of happiness around the world. Used to be a real ladies' man. I wonder what he is now. So he's a rhetorician, speaker with great speech and speech defense, but lacking armor. And what he says, you want to be friendly or aggressive, go with Felipe or Victor. Now, once we do this, we do have our captain here. We do get diplomatic points and there's some other traits and everything that we can get such as the captain's part making friends with Kame will attract helpers when solving enough friendly encounters so we're going to be try and be friends with people now to be friends with people there are a few people that we can try and take here and see you can even select uh different idealists or different people even people that were listed as captains which is what that badge means i hope i'm making sense here i do kind of have to go through things a little bit fast here but i'm going to take maria rodriguez who is another friendly person, a glass cannon, who's amazing speech, but lacks defenses, she's a beguiler. And then, as much as I could take kind of a third person here, I guess I could take Haas. I mean, she's uh, she has good speech, defense, and armor. And uh, she, she can boost the spirit of an ally. She's a diplomat, he's a diplomat, she's a beguiler. So I don't necessarily know if we need two diplomats or two beguilers. Survivalist is okay. Um... I don't know. I don't know for sure. Templeton. Templeton's interesting. At least I could unlock him as a captain because he's apparently a pretty good captain. But his uh, special ability doesn't necessarily go into that. So I think I'll go with uh, Perry Hendro. Right? Pedrino. I mispronounced that twice. There we go. So we have a Brazilian, an Argentinian, and someone from Ghana. And we are going to be very, very friendly. This icon, uh, how suited the group is for being a friendly, relies on mutual understanding of empathy. So, whereas if I go with him... It's kind of balanced here. And sometimes the balance isn't bad, but we're just gonna go all out free hugs. Let's start the adventure. So here's our crew, as we're gonna be trying to be renowned explorers. I didn't even really say what this game is about. It's Renowned Explorers International Society. And I don't know if I'm gonna be cut off during the loading screens or not, but pretty much you get maps that you get to go through and you get to find treasure. And I'm gonna be reading through some of this text just a little bit here. But there are a few different default starting lands. One of them is the Viking Islands, and this is it. you are got your Renowned Explorers International Society membership. Kwame wants to make a big interest and is going for elusive treasure, the Viking ship. And there's the famous explorer Leif Erikson is somewhere on this forgotten island, or the ship at least. Time for adventure. We're gonna skip the tutorial. So here we go, there is Leaf's ship, which really ran aground, and here's our happy, friendly team. Everyone's a bit nervous. The crew starts out with low resolve. If your crew ever reaches zero resolve, the crew will explore in your adventures over, so we better be careful. 
Now, there's a few things that you're going to see that point out and say, hey, this is a lot like FTL. You do have different nodes that you can jump to. There is a little fog of war, so you can't necessarily go through all the time. Uh, but where, and you do have uh, some different resources to kind of muster here. You have a limited supply of moves that you can make. This can be increased a little bit over the course of the game. Uh, and then we have your crew members, which this is where it kind of differentiates pretty well. You do have levels and skills that you can train. You have perks. Diplomat level 2 lets you do certain quest events and everything. And you have stats as well. Speech, speech defense, attack power, and notice that we start with equipment too. Exploring for dummies, which has some speech power and speech defense. So I'm not going to be trying to attack people physically, even though uh, all these people can kind of do it. Uh, uh, Pedrino is probably pretty good for that too, but we're going to be trying to go friendly, friendly, happy, happy here. So I think probably the best way to do this, because what I like about this game is both the ability to try and use different crews, different strategies, and just the kind of encounters that you can get to, which we'll see if we can do an encounter in a minute. But we go, there's a new area here. The crew arrives at the open theater where some villagers are going to perform a piece about Vikings. The director approaches you. One of our actors is sick. Hey, this sounds like a kid show uh, storyline that I've seen for some of my kid shows. Uh, the stand is not very talented. Maybe it'd be fun if you could play the Viking Jarl, or Jarl, as I used to say. Thanks, scrolls. It'll be great for the people to see a new face. So this could be Maria's big break. Maria insists on doing it. And you can see there's different modifiers here. 10% from base chance, 33% from speech power, 20% from speaker, 40% from beguiler. So she gets a superb performance, and we're going to get some stuff for it. So yay, she's apparently a very convincing Jarl. Maria seems to be an accomplished actor. No lines were fumbled in the part of the Viking chief is portrayed with conviction. Also gives Maria a boost speech for this, or speech boost for this expedition. So the crew leaves behind a bedazzled crowd who are now clamoring for your autograph. So we get plus five speech for Maria. That's a buff for her attacks. We get campaign tokens, which will turn into status, which we may be able to get to in this video by the end. Because this early mission is only going to take as long as I require it to take here. But, now we're going to have our first fight here. These two villagers keep following you, annoying you with well intention. Wow, you come from around the world. Wow, you've been to London. Wow, you're from Brussels sprouts. Wow, Brussels sprouts are good. But these friendly gentlemen need convincing to stop following you. So, we're going to hit fight. Now, fighting in this game is interesting. But we are going to try and do it in a friendly manner here. You can be aggressive, you can be devious, or you can be friendly. If you some, And sometimes you'll get some guidance as to what's going to happen after the encounter. But right now we have a few things to think about here. This is not quite hex-based, because it's five sides all around. And you have different moods that you're going to have to try and develop here. We want to end all of our fights friendly. That's the team that we built here. So we have different abilities, melee attack, uh, devious speech attack speech based attack or a melee friendly attack so let's take uh pedrino who can't walk there because it's a bush and let's be friendly this is how we're going to come back you can see his uh life bar goes down so happy oh it's heartwarming there we go so now our modifier is going to change here it's pleasant and every and all physical attacks have 50 percent attack power so if this is your strategy you can make it work pretty well so anytime i do a physical attack it's going to uh, do 50% more damage, but if I do it one time, we'll switch the mood, and you don't always want that. So it looks like I did a little bit of a dumb play here because he's not gonna. I'm not gonna be able to take out one person right away. But we'll go. Oh, you know what? Right here, Maria. She has her extra speech, and this person is so happy, is excited about your cause, and stops resisting. So that's great. And now we're gonna have oh, Captain, my Captain over here, and not entirely able to take him out. Oh, hands across the world, and everybody's just happy. And that's the end of the turn. And the mood's not going to change very much, but we're going to see here. He fumbles his attack, which does happen from time to time. Is he going to fumble too? Yeah, because you don't have 100% chance to hit, but they were trying to be friendly to me as well. And you're going to get different reactions from people around the world based on your uh, attitude that you go completing fights with. So we'll just finish this here. And we'll probably have some opportunities to see switch or switch ups here later on. But some people say Pedrino, by the way, is one of the most powerful characters in the game. I would not dispute that. But your friendly approach has proven its worth. We get extra resolve token or extra uh, encounter tokens. Yay! And uh, Kwame gets an extra buff for resolving the encounter in general. So, in a kind but firm manner, you explain to them you have to leave now. Once Kwame gives you some form candy. 
Give them some foreign candy, they thank you wholeheartedly and go away. And now we have the expedition to continue with. So these little tokens will come into play at the end, and Maria has leveled up. So that's what the killing blow does. Okay, so she can do... She's going to get the special ability Seduce, which uh, has a range of two tiles, and become target becomes impressed at positive. Gain minus 25% speech defense, which stacks very well with everything here. And we can either get uh, double down on Beguiler, add the Charms perk, or we can try and get Archaeologist Legends perk. I think I'd find that generally you want to have something that's level 3 for some of the later missions. We already have a Diplomat and a Survivalist, so we could do all right there. All right, now there's different places we can go. We only have five supplies left, so we can do a cultural challenge. We do have a diplomat for that. We can gain some status. So a local merchant wants to trade in genius trinkets. Making deals with influential locals might increase the status and profit of both. However, anger the merchant, you're left with nothing. So it looks like we're going to have to do with the Wheel of Fate for this. We're going to put Kwame in there, who has good speech powers, a diplomat. He's going to negotiate for the best deal, so wheel! Don't fail me, please! Oh, it's close. I think the game likes to troll sometimes to put that animation for when it's really close. So Kwame convince the uh, merchant and you get profit and status. So a bonus, and those little bonuses you want to stack up. By the time this is all over, Kwame gets a level up for here. Same as before, as nice as Quick Thinker can be, I think I'm going to double down on the Diplomat here. And he gets cheer, which is nice because it is a good heal. Healing, actually something that's pretty decent in this game. Let's go down here. We only have four supplies. Now, you can pick up supplies sometimes in the mission. So, we get two campaign just for this. While well, chit-chatting about the weather, Kwame mentioned search for Viking Longboat. Viking ship on our beautiful island. Iceland is so full of surprises. We'll make sure to spread the word. What happy people. You part ways, but not before Petrina manages to insult Iceland. The harsh weather is small. Really? Towns and how can somebody live somewhere where it's sun only signs stars a day? No, Padrino knows that Brazil's superior. It takes some apologizing for Maria to ease the tension. Oh, Iceland's great. That's too bad. All right, so we do have two places here, a nature challenge, which we can possibly do, and a cultural challenge. Let's try both of these. And this may be it for the island. Technically, I can go around past the, past the supply limit, but then you start to get a lot of problems. So the crew finds some true Viking treasure, a turf house. Due to lack of wood here, it is sometimes better installations. Viking built houses covered in earth. This house must hold historical trinkets. You hear some noise coming from it. The turf, the big turf house, the clubhouse of Viking committee, a group that tries to preserve Viking history. They have a good time with each other, Minori. Maybe it's because you don't look Viking enough. These guys probably have some interesting trinkets in their possession. Kwame wonders how to best handle it. Now I can choose some different people here. I can use Kwame, who is a uh, level three diplomat, has the best buff. Pedrino. You, I'll lose resolve if I screw this up, and I am on the mode where once I lose that resolve, it's game over. So we want to take Kwame in there. Great success! Kwame is accepting the Viking committee. You learn a lot about the Vikings. Yay! When the time's right, Kwame explains your cause and ask if the committee has some treasure. The chairman responds, "Of course. You're one of our Viking friends. What are you looking for? I'll try to find the best I can give. Something like a rune stone, something uh, typically Vikings, something distant loot plundered by the Vikings, and something that Vikings show it's f they had fun. I really don't know what any of these will do." So we'll, check, we'll just do typically Viking. And you receive a dragon head. There's an 80% chance. All kinds of different treasures. There we go, dragon head. We get renown, which is our score currency. Pretty much an insight, which is useful later on in the game. So campaign whenever an archaeologist succeeds at the adventure world. Not the best here. But you find good treasure. It's still nice when you can get multiple treasures on a mission here. And you'll see we have study tokens as well. That's important for research. This thing, which I cannot actually do except between expeditions so we'll get there later uh we got two more places we can go two jumps as it were we'll at least go here first and highlanders sweating the breathing heavy one of them offers to coach the speakers here and oh boy here they are we're a local rugby team and we don't have anybody who is good at the athletics no fighter no athlete so we're just going to cheer from a distance coach appreciates and regards the best supporters ever now we can go over here, but this isn't a very good one. So we're going to go ahead and go to the Viking ship. Technically, if you're gone for a min-max, you want to try and go to every single jump because this first special encounter is not going to be very difficult. But the Viking boat must be nearby. Once you're there, your expedition will come to an end. Let's go onwards. So Boats and Bullies is the name of the event. The crew searches the hills and dates through until spots in the distance an intact Viking boat. The crew rushes towards the amazing final. Surely skyrocket your reputation. So you get closer and then... 
Uh oh, the crew spotted by a familiar face. The French explorer Rivalo, I guess that's how you pronounce it. Number one, the most promising explorer's Lankins. He re Lee laughs. I can't even read. Thank you, amateur. How very lucky. I'm not doing a good French accent. Sorry, guys. How very lucky you are to find this Viking boat just after me under Rule 24B of the Explorer Mandate. Fellow explorers should help each other out, and I really need this treasure to affirm my number one position. Your hope won't be forgotten. Well, maybe. So we cry and say, this is our treasure. Look how pissed Kwame is. He's supposed to be friendly, but he's not. It seems that my explanation wasn't clear enough. Maybe my strong friend Tommy can explain this situation better while I take the vessel. Hey, wait a minute. Look, it's Tommy. He's got a tiny hat. That's funny. Before Kwame can stop Rivalo and his crew, Tommy steps forward. No, -uh, little explorers. I need to explain to you something. He's not letting you pass, so we're going to defend ourselves. So here is our first boss fight. You get a boss fight at the end of every time you're around here. And we have different... Uh, things that we can do here. If we settle this as aggressive, Tommy will be impressed with our skill. If we settle this as devious, he runs and leaves. If we settle this as uh, friendly, he thinks you're nice. You want to go for the one that has the X on the spot here. Typically, although it doesn't seem to make much of a difference, we're going to go for an aggressive in here. You see all the people that are around here. This is a hex-based map, so we can try and... Uh, make things happen. It's really unfortunate that uh, Pedrino didn't level up so far, but we do have a bunch of glass cannons, so we are going to just see if we can try and take this out early by, of course, being friendly. Everyone's very happy, and now dire minus 30% armor. And you see, you do not want that, because that is a terrible debuff, and they're just being, being, being aggressive. So what we're going to do instead, well, first off, we're going to go ahead and do this. Just to take out somebody else. How happy. And then before it can be their turn, and uh, poor Pedrino is going to be in a little bit of trouble here. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. We are going to go ahead and try and flip the switch so we don't end the turn with an armor debuff. So now we go from that to Devious Powers of 25% power. Yay. And he's a little exposed right now. In fact, he's very exposed. But not everybody's going to be able to reach them. So that's a plus. Now we do have probably some need to fall back here in a second because his his spirit's going to be going down just from getting hit. Until eventually, if you let yourself get too low, you're going to just want to run away. So while this is kind of a big group of people to take on, one thing we can do here early is try and funnel them back here. Now, I do have a heal that's pretty powerful from you, but it might be better if I just use a friendly ability from both of you guys, just to try and both raise his mood, and let's see, how far can you guys move? About to here. So we'll just do it safe. That's enough of a heal for now. Now, these little glowy squares, if I went into there, I'd be healing up some uh, resolve each turn. Not resolve, but spirit. But if I just try and run away from these guys just a little bit, I can use the uh, obstacles to my advantage and at least limit the amount of time they can hit me. So Devious abilities are going to be stronger, but I don't really need them too much to actually get these hits on. So happiness there. And right now we're still in the aggressive mode. Let's see how much further we can go with this here. These guys are going to start falling down here in just a minute. Okay, Seduce has a range of two. I might as well use it now. Ah, uh, yeah, might as well use it now. Well, we don't want to. We don't just want to hurt ourselves here. So I can actually take him out next turn. So this will this will at least hurt his ability to hit us. Is that what that did? I can't remember now. So, thwack, but Maria's gonna be okay. You can't actually hit Maria. So I can end this aggressive style here. Well, not with you. Alright. We can end this encounter just with Maria actually punching him? Nope. That's not how this was supposed to work. Okay, if this isn't going to work, 
I mean, we're aggressive right now, and if I just do the devious attack here, I'll still end the battle as aggressive because I'm not going to flip the switch. So let's just do that. Like I said, you want to. He's gonna. This guy's gonna respect respect strength because he has a tiny. Actually, we did end it. Devious, derp. Okay. Well, we hurt his feelings. Bam! Yeah, you're so mean. Tommy runs away. While running away, he drops a treasure map, but the treasure's yours. You're left with a cryptic treasure map, so it didn't make a difference this time. But I did screw that up. I shouldn't have ended devious. I should have ended friendly or aggressive. Treasure map is passed around after an instant crew. The crew stares at the interpretation and points to a difficult to reach area. Or a landmark the locals recognize. Let's go to the landmark the locals recognize, because that's probably something that our people can do instead of something that requires athletics. So the campaign quickly yields results. No one can match your support, but the stringing stories together, you infer the location of the hidden treasure. And we got a rune stone. Cool. And you can collect all the treasures to fill up your little treasure book and get a steam achievements and stuff. So the expedition concludes on a high note, but he took the Viking boat, so we're going to go back to London. And that's the end of this mission. We're going to get our little score tally here. And we end it as friendly people. We're a reputation of being friendly. We did get uh, two treasures. Not the best ever, but... We do get some extra renown gold status. Status is going to kind of be our key here. And we'll just go to the uh, in-between mission area just to show you kind of what it's all about. So Kwame is currently 128 renown. He's a dashing diplomat. Isn't that good for you? Uh, Rivalo is up at the top, of course, and then we have all these other people that are just around. So we're at the Renown Explorers International Society, and we get to upgrade our airship, which lets us carry more things. This happens every time. Now we have additional three supply. And we're pleased that you're aiming to become a number one explorer. However, I wonder if you can beat the already successful rival. We hope you can. Society as many leads as a word of what my weight, but you can do four more expeditions before the most renowned explorer is elected, so make them count. So we have four missions before we get to uh, do everything here. And we'll we'll go through all that stuff that happens. And just a minute. Like I said, I just want to show you all this kind of in-between mission thing a little bit. And you all can let me know if you want to see more of this. I think we're just going to go with that part. Too bad we didn't get to see party time. That's a very powerful ability. But now we have different things that we can do. We can research. I like doing preparation first because it's one of the few things that you can get there. There's other research trees. It's kind of Civ 5 esque but uh, they're, they're very specialized. And some of these you can't even do until your second expedition. But I like unlocking this first. And then we can do 20 and 30 research. Tools are actually pretty important, but so is upgrading shops. But we can probably do that one next time, so we'll do that. All right, so next research is 40. We're going to have to come back to that later. If you do an all-science team, you can actually fill things out. Now, there's different jobs that you can do between that will actually give you different stuff. But our people are not exactly suited for that right now. There's some traits and abilities you can get later. My suggestion is to hold on to your insight for now. We have an item shop, and there's a few things that you can buy in the item shop. Maybe the more important ones early are uh, some of the trinkets, because they'll give you perks that you don't necessarily have, like Pedrino. He does have some survivalist traits, as I can't click on him individually. He, does have, he doesn't have navigation, though, so that would actually bump him up to level 4. Monkey Wrench. Once again, he... Uh, it's not made by actual monkeys, but we don't have any engineers, so we can get that there. Now, I can potentially upgrade this store, but I don't necessarily need to do that just yet, because I don't want to spend... I, since I didn't research the upgrade thing, I don't want to go into that. The other part of it is your entourage. Specialists are good. You always want to get one that can try and go into what you're trying to do with the mission. So one extra campaign for every encounter you end friendly is awesome. So now that's any encounter I get, I'll get extra campaign tokens, which are probably going to be my bread and butter because I'm going to be relying a lot on status. So I can get some different things here. We can try and turn our status into more status. I like getting at least a little bit of research early. So we'll probably get a lobbyist. Don't need as much gold right away. So we'll probably get... We're going to be getting more status. We're going to be getting more campaign tokens probably. So I can't get the 60 right now, which is too bad. But, I mean, that's kind of how the game goes. We can do a little bit more of this kind of later on. But just I want to give you all at least a brief look. Because Renown Explorers is fun and interesting. It's a little different. You know what? I think I will pick up and do this 
maybe beyond maybe this run maybe some other run we'll see that's kind of the idea though free play Friday is just play something have some fun and then we have some different things that we can do later we can go to the Caribbean islands or the Hungarian fort or the Mali mystery which is a uh, free DLC and these areas are full of good spirited villages devious hyenas and a friendly approach might help which is pretty useful we do have the Caribbean island which is a great place for a research team, which unfortunately is not my team at all, which is why I didn't go for the students. Or we can go to the Hungarian Fort, which has an alchemy lab, and there must be something you may discover in these forgotten places. Tactician, archaeologist, quick thinker, and diplomat challenges await here as well. So we can think about that, just kind of some of the other missions here. Tell me your thoughts on Renown Explorers. I picked it up on Steam sale. It's fun. I think it's going to have more staying power than Reyes, that's for sure. I just don't know how much more. But tell me your thoughts, tell me your own experiences. This is Asher, thanks for watching, and I guess I'll see you again sometime soon, where we can try and dot the map some more. Take care.